iOS 26, Google's Material 3 Expressive, and One UI 8. This is the new design of the most popular operating systems for years to come. In this comparison, we will deep dive into the UI differences to see what are the pros and cons of each one, and why. This video will include four main categories, haptics, user experience, animations, and styling. The scoring system will be as follows. The winner will get two points, the second place will get one point, and zero points for the third. If it's a tie between two operating systems, each one will take a point and zero points for the third. And finally, if it's something exclusive to one operating system, it will take a point and zero points for the rest. And now let's start with the easiest one, the haptics. Since Android 12, I always say that Pixel UI is the best in utilizing the haptics in more areas throughout the OS when compared to the competition. And with Material 3 Expressive, it's literally everywhere. Each toggle in the quick settings gives you a haptic feedback. When you reposition apps and widgets on the home screen, adjust the brightness, every volume slider you come across, scrolling through the recent apps screen, pull down the notification shade, and more. None of these haptics offered by One UI 8 or iOS 26. So the win goes to Pixel UI with two points iOS comes second for having more haptics than One UI, such as when you trigger the assistant, fully dismiss notifications, which are also available on Pixel UI, and even AirDrop's haptic feedback. The only exclusive haptic on One UI 8 is when swiping up to go home, so it comes third. So that's it with the haptics, now let's talk about the user experience. All three agreed that the transparency and the blur is the way to go, but each company has its own approach. The notification shade is a great example to see the pros and cons of each one. Pixel UI blurs and shades everything. One UI 8 blurs the wallpaper and shades the notification banners, while iOS 26 only blurs the notification banners using this frosted glass-like effect, which they call liquid glass, while keeping the wallpaper completely visible. It depends on your personal taste which one looks better, but from an accessibility standpoint, Pixel UI is the least distracting and the most comfortable for reading text. The second best is One UI 8. The wallpaper interferes a bit more in comparison to Pixel UI, but overall it's still easy enough to see what's on the screen without a problem. In contrast, iOS 26 approach is very distracting. Look at how the notification center header overlaps with the wallpaper and the notification timestamp is barely visible. It can get even worse with a more decorative wallpaper like this one, which makes the notification text a lot harder to read. So two points to Pixel UI, one point to One UI 8, and zero points to iOS 26. The control center is another example that shows why Apple's approach needs some work. It's not only about the wallpaper here, but you have to deal with the home screen icons that are even more distracting, which makes me struggle to see the controls. For the Android phones, the ranking remains the same. Pixel UI still offers the best readability, so it comes first, followed by One UI 8, and iOS 26 comes third. Moving to the lock screen, the same story repeats itself. On iOS 26, you will struggle with the notifications and widgets readability. One UI 8 is slightly better for not being too transparent by adding a shade behind the most important items to make the text more visible, but as you see, it struggles sometimes with the clock while Pixel UI played it safe. It darkens the wallpaper a bit with the least transparency possible to make things crystal clear. Putting the looks aside, I still think Pixel UI is the most practical so it comes first, followed by One UI, and iOS comes third. Keep in mind that I'm only focusing on the user experience for now and later I will talk about the styling options. Moving to the home screen, it's a different story. I see iOS is the best in separating apps and widgets from the background, by layering and outlining the items in a way that adds extra depth to give the least distracting look. Plus, only on iOS you can stretch the wallpaper to make it smaller, which blurs the top and bottom parts of the screen to give even extra separation. While it's harder for Pixel UI and One UI 8 to separate things in this scenario. In contrast, iOS doesn't do as good when it comes to folders. Even though I like what Apple did to make it look like real glass, but the too much transparency ruined the experience in this part. I think One UI 8 has the best folder design while Pixel UI is very basic. Overall, I think iOS deserves the win despite its distracting folder design for nailing the icons and widget separation, which is the most important. 
The second best is One UI for having a better folder design than Pixel UI that got zero points. Overall, in the user experience category, the win goes to Pixel UI not because it looks the best, but it offers the most user-friendly experience in most scenarios with a total score of seven points. One UI is not far behind from Pixel UI in this area, so it comes second with four points and iOS comes third with two points. Now let's talk about the animations. Starting with the basic gestures like pulling down the notification shade, iOS 26 has a very realistic glass effect, especially when you look at the edges and how it reflects the lights and what's underneath it. Plus it slightly darkens the wallpaper. I also like how the home screen items animate in and out in the process. I see a lot of effort here. Pixel UI on the other hand uses the zoom and blur effects to nicely reveal the notifications with a little bounce at the end. Lastly, One UI 8 is the most basic. It only blurs the background and that's it. So two points to iOS for having the most realistic animation, followed by Pixel UI and zero points to One UI. Moving to the actual notifications, Pixel UI is unmatched in this area. Starting with the dismiss action, the items interact with each other as if it's a single container and you are slicing a piece out of it. In addition to the haptic feedback that makes it even more satisfying. In contrast, iOS and One UI list the notifications as individual items, so they are not as interactive. But iOS has the edge over One UI for giving a visual and haptic feedback when you fully dismiss a notification, so two points to Pixel UI, one point to iOS, and zero points to One UI. The second one is the expand and collapse animation. Again, Pixel UI is the best here. It makes everything feel more connected as the items interact with each other in a pleasing and playful way. In contrast, One UI and iOS look almost identical here. So I will call it a draw with one point each versus two points to Pixel UI. But iOS and Pixel UI have the best notification banners animation. They have more physics in them, unlike One UI's basic slide in and out animation, so one point each and zero points to One UI. I also would like to talk about a set of iOS animations that are unmatched on the Android phones. Starting with the Dynamic Island, it has one of the best animations in any operating system. Look at how it animates when I expand or collapse the media controls. One UI Live Updates is the second best, so it deserves a point, while Pixel UI is a bit behind. The second one is Series Animation, and it's by far the best in this comparison. While both Android phones are about the same, so two points to iOS versus a draw between Pixel UI and One UI with one point each. The third one is how the wallpaper is pushed when you press any of the physical buttons on the iPhone. And none of the Android phones offer something similar, so one point only to iOS. The fourth one is when you switch between different pages in native apps. It has this water bubble animation that looks really cool, and you will see the same when you drag any of the sliders. So it comes first with two points. Pixel UI and One UI are about the same and both look very basic in comparison, so I will call it a draw and give each one a point. Moving to the quick settings or control center, I found all three to be very similar in how they expand or collapse certain times. But iOS has the best icons animation when you toggle things on or off, while Pixel UI is the only one that has the same interactive approach we've seen in the notification shade. When you tap certain tiles, they push the ones next to them, plus all the tiles change from oval to rounded rectangles based on the current state. So in this one, I will call it a draw between Pixel UI and the iOS 26 with one point each and zero points to one UI. In opening and the closing apps, all three are doing well, but iOS 26 is the only one that blurs and animates the background at the same time, while one UI and the Pixel UI only rely on the zoom in and out effects. In this one, I will give the win to iOS for having the richest animations, and the second spot goes to One UI for being more fluid than the Pixel that got zero points. In the app switching, I see that One UI is the worst for two reasons. First, it doesn't handle the status bar animation properly. It takes time to switch between white and black icons when needed. So halfway through, you will see white icons on a white background and vice versa, which doesn't look great. Secondly, it doesn't fully blur the wallpaper behind it, so it's a bit distracting. In contrast, iOS and Pixel UI are better in handling this. The background is fully blurred, which gives better separation. iOS hides the status bar while transitioning between apps to avoid any contrast issues, while Pixel UI switches between light and dark status bar halfway through to be ready before reaching the other app. So I will call it a draw between iOS and Pixel UI with one point each, 
and zero points to one UI. Moving to the recent apps screen, iOS has the best open and close animation. The wallpaper, the home screen icons, the app previews stack, and the blur effect animate to give a really nice and smooth transition. One UI is about the same as iOS, minus the wallpaper animation, so it comes second. Pixel UI is the worst here. It doesn't animate the wallpaper same as One UI, and the blur effect transition is too fast and aggressive, especially when you go back to the home screen. Additionally, One UI and iOS use a 3D design for the app preview stack, making the transition between apps look more pleasing, unlike the flat and basic look of Pixel UI. So I will call it a draw between One UI and iOS with one point each, and zero points to Pixel UI. The last animation I want to compare in the recent apps screen is when you force quit an app. Android 16 has some cool physics here. When you half swipe an app, it bounces everything around it, and with a full swipe, the remaining apps hit each other like a pendulum. One UI and iOS, on the other hand, are very similar. They use the same animations we got used to, which is not as interactive as Pixel UI, which comes first with two points, and I will call it a draw between the other two with one point each. Before jumping to the next category, let me tell you that now in the Wallpapers by In-Depth Thick Reviews app, you can download the wallpapers locally on device, which means you can apply any of the new styling options offered by the three operating systems on your wallpaper, plus you have the ability to edit the wallpaper first in-app before downloading, which is a really nice feature. You will find Google Play Store download link in the description, and for iOS users, you can find my wallpaper pack on Patreon using the link in the description below. And now let's get back to the video. So that's it with the animations. Now let's talk about the styling options offered by each OS. Starting with the lock screen, let's compare the clock customization options. On iOS 26, now you can stretch the clock all the way down, and it dynamically changes the size when you pull up the notifications. Plus it uses the gyroscope to add some light reflections when you tilt the phone, which is a nice touch. In addition to the ability to choose between glass or solid clock designs, and the previous styling options we got used to, like the depth effect that puts the clock behind the subject, change the language, choose between six different fonts, adjust the weight, and pick from many different colors, or manually create your own. Comparing this to Pixel UI, we have the same clock designs from the previous Android version, plus a new slider that only available for the default design to adjust the font weight and width. When it comes to the clock colors, Pixel UI gives you a set of options inspired by your wallpaper, but it's missing the custom color option, unlike iOS and One UI. For the size, you are limited to either large or small, with no manual adjustment. One UI 8, on the other hand, supports manual size adjustment, same as iOS, but the size is very limited in comparison. We have multiple clock styles to choose from, the ability to toggle the weather info on or off, and to choose the date option to be above or under the clock. Choose between 9 different fonts, but only the default option supports weight adjustment, unlike iOS that offers the same for 5 out of 6 fonts, and finally the ability to choose between many color options, or create your own if you want. In this comparison, iOS 26 takes the lead for offering much more, so it takes 2 points followed by One UI 8 that offers some similar features, and Pixel UI comes third with zero points. So let's move on to the wallpaper styling. Back to iOS, now we have the new spatial scene feature that turns your wallpaper into a 3D object. And when you combine this with the clock styling options like the depth effect and the stretched digits, you can get such a beautiful lock screen. Plus the previous customization options like adding different filters, extend the wallpaper, or choose one of the available dynamic wallpapers under weather and astronomy, emoji, and more. On Pixel UI, we got the new wallpaper studio that takes your lock screen to a whole new level. First, you get shapes that adds a frame around the subject in your photo to make it pop with multiple options to choose from, and the ability to change the background color by picking one from the wallpaper inspired options with the ability to adjust the brightness. When you use this option, you get a minimal wallpaper with an amazing unlocking animation. The second effect is the weather. You can either choose local to dynamically change the effect based on your current location or pick one of your choice. Either way, the animations will interact with the wallpaper. For example, the snow accumulates over the subject, the fog will surround it, and the raindrops hit the display. Plus, you can adjust the intensity. 
When you apply this effect, the animation plays for 3 to 4 seconds then disappears. If you unlock your phone during that time, the effect gets carried over to your home screen. The third and last option is the cinematic wallpaper, which is the same thing as Apple's spatial scene feature. It adds a 3D effect to your wallpaper. I wish we had iOS's depth effect to make it stand out. But what I like more about Pixel UI is the 3D effect carries over to the home screen, not just the lock screen like on iOS, and the unlocking animation looks so much better. Moving to One UI, you get the frame feature similar to Pixel UI's shapes, but with more options to choose from. In contrast, it's missing two things. First, it doesn't allow you to adjust the color brightness, plus there is no unlocking animation which makes Pixel's approach more pleasing. The weather effects are also available, but it doesn't allow you to force a specific one, nor interact with the wallpaper as good as Pixel UI. Lastly, you get the option to add filters similar to iOS and a couple of dynamic wallpapers that you can change their design and colors. So in the wallpaper styling, I will give the win to Pixel UI for offering more than the competition, followed by iOS 26 and One UI 8 comes third. Next, the home screen. All three offer themed or tinted icons and widgets with the ability to choose between different colors. On iOS, you have more flexibility in the colors as you can choose whatever you want or pick one from the wallpaper by using the eyedropper instead of just picking one of the available options. Another advantage is all icons adapt without the need to rely on the developer to support the feature. That's why on Android, some icons don't adhere to the system styling but Android has its own advantages too. First, the theming is system-wide, which means everything like the quick settings, notifications shade, keyboard, and even apps adapt to your color palette, plus each palette includes multiple colors, a main one and secondary ones, not just one color like iOS. So I will call it a draw between all three in this one. But iOS 26 takes it a step further by adding this new clear effect that in my opinion looks very elegant with the right wallpaper. Plus you get the ability to make it light or dark. So one point to iOS for having this feature. Additionally, One UI 8 and iOS 26 give you the option to resize the icons and widgets and remove labels which is missing from Pixel UI, so one point each. By this, I'm done with the comparison and that gives you a clear idea about the UI differences between all three. In my opinion, Google has stepped up the game with Material 3 Expressive. In contrast, iOS 26 is like a mixed bag. Some areas are so much better, while others are worse. And One UI 8 started to lag behind after what we've seen from the competition. So that's pretty much it for today. Please let me know in the comments what do you think. But for now, thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.